Welcome back everybody, my name is Nick930 and today I wanted to briefly talk about one of my favorite snowboarding games, SSX3, and how it holds up today against more recent games like SSX Deadly Descent and Steep. Now to start this off, we're going to have to take a look at how SSX3 compares with its level design. SSX3 had the perfect balance of freedom in its open world. It didn't require players to click through a selection of courses and wait through a bunch of loading screens. But it also didn't just drop the player onto a gigantic empty mountain with a bunch of trees and randomly generated hills. The entire mountain was cleverly designed to interweave a bunch of well-made courses together, connected by intersections that allowed players to choose which slope they wanted to take. But each slope was narrow enough that there was always a clear path to a big jumper rail, and this allowed the developers to cram the slopes with well-designed shortcuts and secret jumps that could give you a serious edge over your competition. The most recent SSX title unfortunately did away with this open world design, in favor of featuring different peaks, each with distinct courses that needed to be selected on a selection menu. This felt like a big step back and turned the game away from being an open world adventure to more of an arcade game. Thankfully, the courses themselves were designed with the same level of care as the courses in SSX3, with smart rail placement and tons of opportunity to string together impressive tricks. In fact, I'd say the courses in the newer SSX game are designed even better, with a much more consistent pace and a lot of momentum to keep the game moving fast. But I do wish they had found some way to connect all the courses into one seamless mountain like in SSX3. Ubisoft took the opposite approach with their winter extreme sports game Steep. Steep features a singular massive mountain, much like SSX3, but unlike SSX3, the player isn't limited by any boundaries on the slopes. You can literally go anywhere you want on these mountains, even if that means going down a huge empty slope with no jumps or obstacles. The entire game was a backcountry instead of being broken up into things like slope style or half pipes. While I appreciate the fact that you can carve your own path and are free to find your own lines in Steep, the lack of focus ends up hurting the overall feel of the game, and even after finding the coolest series of paths, they pale in comparison to the well-designed courses in the SSX games. SSX3's mountain was linked by three large peaks, each accessible through a lift system or helicopter drop-off. While it was impossible to ride down every slope in one run, it was still possible to drop from the highest point of the mountain and ride down slopes along all three of the interconnected peaks until you finally end up in the large city at the bottom. But it wasn't just the mountain that made SSX3 so great, it was also the gameplay itself, the actual tricks and polished design that kept it fun and addicting. SSX3 built from things learned from the original SSX and SSX Tricky. You could launch off of jumps and perform various grabs, ride on rails, and even connect tricks together by doing board presses in between. Completing tricks would result in a special uber meter to be filled on the side, and when filled, players could perform insane tricks that would be impossible in real life. In addition to performing huge tricks, players could also hold a button to boost, something that is incredibly useful for winning races and maximizing airtime on the bigger jumps. Though, after picking up the controller and finally getting a chance to replay this game again, I had to say that the controls didn't age as well as I remembered. I found it frustrating trying to get the character to do what I wanted, like grind on a specific rail or maneuver into a narrow pathway. The control scheme itself was also cumbersome and difficult to master. But as soon as I started playing SSX on the Xbox 360 again, I remembered how much better that game controlled. The character handles so much better, despite the game running at a disappointing locked 30 FPS. I found myself stringing together massive combos, and the overall momentum felt far more consistent. I rarely found myself falling after a huge trick or awkwardly running into the start of a rail and falling over. Steep also handles very nicely for the most part, with easy to understand controls and nicely made animations. But my problem with Steep is the stupid G meter. This meter basically limits what you can and can't do on this insanely massive mountain. Unlike the SSX games, Steep doesn't let you just jump off of anything you want. If you fall from too high up, you'll find yourself bailing no matter how you land, forcing you to take a slower, more careful approach to your runs. This is fine for players that appreciate a more authentic and realistic experience, but one of my favorite parts of these snowboarding games is going extremely fast and launching off of huge jumps. The fact that you're not even allowed to do that in Steep was a huge disappointment to me, especially when you consider how many massive cliff sides there are to jump from. So what about game progression? What is there to actually do in these games? Well, the SSX games all handle about the same. You're given a series of races and trick events and need to place in first place to unlock more slopes to ride down. SSX3 lets you earn in-game currency and spend it on cosmetic items in addition to increasing your character's attributes, which is crucial in making the gameplay more tolerable. 
The newer SSX game features a far more complex system of progression, with a weird new overly complicated currency, a bunch of randomly generated boards with varying stats that make absolutely no sense, and a bunch of gear that you need to equip for certain peaks to avoid falling to your death, like armor or climbing axes. The newer SSX was built around the new focus on online gaming, and I feel like this is what ended up hurting the experience. Everything felt like a competition with your friends, as your scores were constantly being compared to them. Progression was also unclear, as slopes would just randomly appear on mountains you already completed, and some were only available in online, limited time competitions. Steep suffers from a similar problem. There doesn't seem to be a clear end goal for Steep. You just find yourself wandering randomly around a gigantic mountain, completing random events, and trying to rank up for no real reason other than unlocking gold cosmetic items for your character. I think SSX3 worked so well because the game forced you to work your way up from the bunny slope to more complex and interesting slopes after successfully completing enough events. The more slopes you unlocked, the longer you can make your runs, and the idea of being able to ride down the entire mountain in a single go kept me wanting to progress more and more. Sure, you could change your character's clothing and board if you wanted, but it felt more like an optional thing, and it wasn't bogged down by annoying network microtransactions and season passes. And I think that's the fundamental reasoning behind why SSX3 is still the best. The game wasn't designed to eventually get better with updates and online connectivity, but was instead built as a large, cohesive, polished experience. There was an actual goal to its fun gameplay, and the world was so well designed you couldn't help yourself from playing more. I really hope EA reapproaches this franchise in the future and gives us a true sequel to SSX. I didn't mind Deadly Ascent, it was actually a lot of fun, but had they combined the fast-paced gameplay of that game with the concepts in SSX3, they would have something really special. But for now, if you're feeling nostalgic, you should definitely check out SSX3 on the Xbox Store and enjoy the updated performance and resolution bump. Thank you guys for watching, and if you have fond memories of SSX3, let us know in the comments section. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content posted every week.